In this presentation, we will take a look at an example putting together financial statements related to the general fund. We're going to have our trial balance on the left side. We're going to put that information into the blue area on the right side. The trial balance is going to be broken out in assets in green, the liabilities in orange, and then what would be the equity section or the assets minus liabilities, the fund balance type section, light blue. Then what would be the income statement type se section in the for-profit type of organization? Those accounts typically temporary accounts, those accounts that would typically close out to what would be the equity section for a for-profit type of organization, those in dark blue. Note, as we look at those dark blue accounts, we got a little bit of a, of a messy situation because we have both the general accounts or the normal accounts revenue and kind of normal account expenditures. And then we have the budgetary accounts, estimated revenues and uh, appropriations, as well as encumbrances. And then encumbrances is going to be a really a, a little bit tricky for us as well. So when we make the financial statements, we're going to have to look at these items and say, well, what are we going to, you know, what are we going to do with these, these items, these budgetary accounts that, that are here as we record this information into the financial statements? Note the reason, one of the reasons we have these kind of funny items here is because we are looking at the funds and, and they're going to be on a modified accrual when we think about the when we think about the government wide activities we're typically on an accrual basis when we think about the governmental funds as is here the general fund then we deal with a modified accrual where we have terms like expenditures that's going to be one of the major giveaways that when we're working with a modified accrual basis when you see a list of accounts or a chart of accounts and you see uh, expenditures or you see you know the budgetary fund balance and encumbrances uh, these are going to be type of accounts you're going to say all right that's a type of fund accounting the principle however is going to be much the same we're going to say I have something that's in balance because the debits minus the credits equal zero in this case debits being the positive credits being negative that equals zero if we find a home for all of these items then our balance sheet will be in balance that's going to be our goal so we're going to take this information on the trial balance we're going to find a home for it on the right side converting from a debit and credit format to a plus and minus format we're going to start with the balance sheet related to the general fund we've got assets up top that we're going to start off with cash is going to be the first asset notice what is not here we don't have anything breaking out between current assets and long-term assets why because we're on a short-term modified accrual type basis where everything is is basically on a short-term flow method and therefore it's all considered to be current asset type of activity so we don't need to break down the subcategories be aware of that then we have the taxes receivable so we have the receivables here. That's going to be the uh, 383. And then we have the allowance. So we're just pulling over the allowance account. And the difference between those two is the net tax is receivable. So that's just going to be the debit minus the credit. So this should look familiar, right? And we're going to pull over the interest and penalties receivable. Another type of receivable account, another kind of current asset type of account, and the related allowance for uncollectible interest and penalties. If we subtract those two, then the 43,555 minus the 20,265 is the 23,290. And then finally, we have the inventory of supplies. So supplies being our last asset. If we add up, then the outer column here, notice the how we formatted this. We brought these two into the inside subcategory to the outside we're going to add up the outer column cash the two receivables and the inventory that takes us to the 934.80 uh, and now we found a home for basically all of the assets then we're going to go to the liabilities and fund balance the second component of what we would consider a, a, an accounting equation here we got the liabilities first we're going to start with the vouchers payable similar to the accounts payable once again note we don't have current and long term because we're in a fund accounting modified accrual all of it's considered basically short term and therefore we don't need to break out short and long term we just know it's all in essence current then we have the deferred inflow of resources uh, unavailable revenues that's going to be the 78.6 so here is this item and that gives us a total note what the total says total liabilities and deferred inflow of resources why Okay, I mean, it doesn't just say total liabilities like you might expect. And that's because really this deferred inflow of resources is a little bit different. A little bit different grouping acts like a liability, but it's not technically the same thing. So we should put it out in it or indicate it as a separate type of category and note how it's been done here. It's been grouped together under liabilities, but then in the total here, we're saying it's total liabilities and deferred inflow of resources. Next item we have is going to be the fund balance. 
and the fund balance is where things get a little bit tricky here. So we think of the fund balance is going to be all the items that are going to be blue because typically we think about the light blue that's going to be the beginning balances usually and then the temporary accounts usually flow into what the equity sections would be so that would close out and so if we were working this in excel we can basically just take the entire blue area and just sum it up debits minus to credits and that would typically what would be in the fund balance you can see here we have some other things going on within the fund balance the first of those things is the non-spendable inventory of supplies. So that's going to be the 19,900. We're going to pull this over uh, directly and say, that, and say that that's going to be the first item that we want. That represents the inventory up top. You'll see here that, you know, we can't do anything with because it's, it's already been purchased. So we want to tell the reader, look, this is represented assets minus liability, a component that we need to break out and you can't, you can't do anything with because it represents an asset that's on the books. Then when we, th when we think about the rest of it, we're going to put it into the fund balance unassigned. If we add those two up, the 19.9 and the 657.690, we get to this total here. Now, if we think about the, this as a whole, all this stuff together, how can we get to basically uh, this number? We can think about this a few different ways. One is that we can actually add together basically the debits and credits. So if we were to do this, if I was to say, I'm going to say that the credits are going to be positive and the debits are going to be negative. So I'm going to say uh, 19,900 plus the 200130 minus the 42,500 plus the 171,260 uh, minus the 313,400 plus the 3417,330 plus the 3177,000 minus the 2959770 minus the 171260 we get to this uh 677590 now that works and the but the reason it works is because it's kind of uh, removing all the accounts that are a little bit messy to us and we'll see more of this as we look at at what would be the equivalent of the, the income statement the activity so note what we have here is we've got the the revenue account and then we have the estimated revenue. So you would think, what are we going to do with this estimate? What are we going to do with this appropriation? What, and what are we going to do with the encumbrance here? And you know, how, how do we have these different type of accounts in terms of what would be the equivalent to the equity section? Well, what's going to happen is we're not going to include the budgetary accounts. We're just not going to include them. And you might say, well, what, how can we do that? Because the thing's in balance here. You can't just start not including numbers because then the thing won't be in balance, right? So... But if you remove it, what we're going to say is we're going to remove the budget exactly as, as it's in there. So the budget is this number for the estimated revenue. It's the appropriations and then it's the budgetary fund balance. And, the, and those will reverse exactly. The debits and credits equal themselves, right? So if we take it, the 42500 plus the 3134500, 3, then, then we get to the total. So the reason, you know, we could just sum up the whole thing is because basically this, we're, we're removing it. We're not including the budget at all. It'll just cancel each other out. Those three numbers will just cancel each other out. Or we can remove them and add up the thing without any of the budgetary accounts. Now you might be asking, what about encumbrances? It's kind of like a budgetary account or technically a budgetary account. What do we do with uh, the encumbrances? I'll put an X by the encumbrance. Well, the encumbrance, I would call it a clearing account. It's a little bit different. It's a, I would call it a, you know, a clearing account. It acts a little bit different, kind of a holding account. And it, its other side clears out as well. It's up here in the encumbrance is outstanding. So we'll put an X by the encumbrance is outstanding. So again, if you just sum up the whole equity section, debits minus the credits, those things just go away. And so if you were in Excel, you could just basically sum up uh, the equity section and get to the basically the, the fund balance. Or you could say, okay, it's going to be, uh, this number, which is the beginning fund balance, and then take into account the actual accounts, which represent, uh, you know, the actual activity, revenue and expenditures, and that'll get you to the ending balance. So that's going to be our, our items there. And finally, we have the total liabilities and equity being the 934.80. So of course, we are in balance assets equaling the total liabilities and equity. Next, we'll take a look at the general fund statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balance, which is, of course, similar to the income statement. That's going to be the activity accounts. Those are going to be those accounts that would be below what would be the equity section uh, or the fund balance section, assets minus liabilities, the dark blue section, those items that we would think would close out to what would be the equity section. 
for a uh, normal account and they typically do except for the exception of possibly the encumbrances so now we got to uh, fill this one out and again we have we have all this kind of messy stuff here this is a little bit messy to fill this out one we've got the revenues now the revenues here are just this line item but you'll recall that we broke that we got to break them out into the details so when we put the this trial balance together we have detail of the revenue account that we didn't put into uh, the line item, but we're breaking it out in the subsidiary ledgers. So within the statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balance, we're going to break out the detail taxes, interest and penalties, and other, we're going to actually break out the detail of this information it could, t pos could be found in uh, the subsidiary type ledgers. And that's going to add up to the total of the three, four, one, seven, three, three, zero. So I'm not going to go into the to the detail of, of those items, but just note that, of course, this revenue line typically grouped together, breaking it out in accordance with the section, the types of revenue, taxes, interest, and penalties, and other. Then we have the expenditures, and, if, and that is different than the expenses because we have the expenditures recorded on the trial balance in one line item. Once again, be broken out in terms of the subsidiary ledgers. We're just going to show the detail here, which is going to be salaries and wages interest on note payable and other that's going to sum up then to our total that adds up to this line item on the trial balance then we have the excess of revenues over expenses of um, the outer column revenues minus the expenses or expenditures being the 457 560 note that that's going to basically tie out to our our number down here that's basically similar to our net income now we typically keep on going to tie this out to the fund balance. And what we're going to do there is have the increase in inventory of supplies. That's going to be the uh, 3,400. And that has to do with the uh, non-spendable act items here. And so take a look at the, the full problem within Excel to see where that 3,400 comes from. We're not going to break it out in too much detail right here, but it has to do with the recording of uh the fund balance non-spendable inventory of supplies then we have the fund balance at the beginning and that represents the fund balance here because we haven't closed everything out to it yet plus the beginning balance of this fund balance before we closed out or, or recorded something to it this 3400 we we would see in the gl because we recorded this this to it uh at the end of the time period so in other words we have the one nine nine zero zero minus the three four zero zero that's what the beginning balance for this account was and then we would add that to plus the two zero zero one hundred and thirty and that gives us our two sixteen six hundred and thirty and then if we add that to the increase in the inventory we're going to say plus the three four zero zero plus basically what would be kind of the net income the four five seven five six zero we're going to get to our ending balance which is the six seven seven five nine zero so in essence we're basically walking this back out to get to the balance that's going to be on our balance sheet the six seven seven uh five nine zero then is what is represented here six seven seven five nine zero on the balance sheet Back to the statement of revenue expenditure and changes in fund balance. Note that as we put that together, again, we discarded a lot of things down here that would be in the dark blue area, which we would think of kind of like the income statement accounts. We didn't do anything with estimated revenues. We didn't do anything with the appropriations and the encumbrances. Just remember, those things reverse exactly. So we're not, we, we could just leave them out and that, and we're still in balance because they reverse exactly the, the, uh, the accounts that I would think of as budgetary accounts to close themselves out or zero themselves off and same with the encumbrances encumbrances here and here will basically net out to zero. So if we just don't include them, we will remain in balance.